Welcome back to Streamers Reloaded, my name is Tom and let's get right into the news. So what's been happening this past week? I gotta tell you, not a whole lot, but we begin with one that I've been covering a small amount of throughout the last three years. From that of Phantom Lord. Now for those who don't know who this is, back in 2016 he was one of the top 10 streamers on the platform alongside Soda Poppin and Summit 1G. Some drama happened involving fake subscriptions and rigged gambling on a website he didn't disclose he had an ownership role in, then he was permanently banned from the platform. That's all a separate drama and if you want to learn more I suggest going to watch Richard Lewis's collection of videos as this is extremely old stuff. So after two years Phantom Lord decides he's going to sue Twitch for breach of contract and was looking for roughly 35 million in compensation. In Phantom Lord's Twitch contract it stated he could not sue for more than 50,000 which in 2019 the judge involved ruled that he could sue for more than 50,000. And that's where we come on to last Friday. The lawsuit is over and Phantom Lord tweeted I won. I won my lawsuit versus Twitch on all counts. Twitch lost everything, including the fraud claim against me for the CSGO shuffle allegations. This is a win for all streamers. Twitch can't bully, lie and treat streamers unfairly the way they have for years. This is alongside an image of him flipping the bird at the Twitch headquarters. It's also important to note that most of the Twitch community do not like Phantom Lord. This becomes very evident if you go into the responses of this tweet with some of the responses getting more like than his original one. So the conclusion to this was that he did win the lawsuit, but how much did he win? Well, he won just $20,000. The exact number being $20,720.34. So on the money side of things, he really didn't win a lot anyway. But Phantom Lord has taken a few additional digs at Twitch where he even said, the jury found that Twitch committed fraud. Let that sink in for a second. And he's also stated that if anyone in the future is planning to sue Twitch, he may be able to help. Then we come on to Tuesday and Phantom Lord also tweeted, Twitch just asked the judge to silence me from tweeting slash talking about the lawsuit. That only works on Twitch. Oh, and they're also trying to seal their internal documents from being seen by the public. So although people don't like Phantom Lord, this lawsuit is a good thing. It proves that if a streamer feels they're unfairly treated and banned from the platform, they can sue, and this case can be used as an example for those future lawsuits. So based off this, everyone is pointing the finger at Dr. To disrespect. Who to this day, although there are a lot of theories out there and some very good ones, there is no definitive reason why he was banned from the platform. So although people don't like Phantom Lord generally, this is a good example for a case in future lawsuits against Twitch if they ever happen. Next up we got a ban from that of Disguised Toast. For those who don't know, Disguised Toast is not a Twitch streamer, but instead a Facebook gaming streamer. Well he has done this before, but Disguised Toast came back to Twitch for a few streams and got some pretty high viewership numbers and received a ban. He said on Twitter, got a temp ban from Twitch. Not a big deal since I don't usually stream there, but it does mean I have to avoid playing with any friends streaming for a few days. The screenshot posted states that the ban was for unmoderated hateful conduct and he continues didn't get a specific reason, but if I have to guess, I was watching an old clip of mine which included a toxic player using the F slur against me. We'll try to be more careful in the future. So there is a clip for this one, I'm not going to play it, but in the clip Disguised Toast kills a player in PUBG, and this player goes off on Toast, calling him a few very select words. Here is the full transcript, but as of right now, Disguised Toast ban has been lifted. Next up we got one from the streamer Annie, with a clip that went viral getting 300,000 views. In the clip she shows an image that I have to censor because of YouTube's rules, but shares her view on the current state of Twitch and sexualized content being deemed as normal and okay. Here's the clip. So normally I would be afraid to show this because like Monka Tios, but this girl was doing this on stream, so you know, she's not banned, which means that Twitch thinks it's okay. Um, this. So this girl is in like some kind of, I don't know what to call the clothing. And she's doing like yoga and like jumping on trampolines and uh, she's calling this a Tifa cosplay I guess because it's black bottom and white top and uh, this is on Twitch, you know? And uh, normally I'd be a bit like, oh shit, I can't show this on stream, but like this is on Twitch. And uh, it's so obviously sexualizing that I, I, I don't know, like we are, we're meant to see this as normal things IRL. Like, we're not, 
this is like no big deal, right? And I think when we have these things as like no big deal, that means when you have actual porn, it has to become so much more hardcore to be counted as then we have another band from that of the streamer Destiny. Now, little history, not too long ago Destiny lost his partnership status on Twitch. He didn't stop streaming there though and on Wednesday received a ban. This happened because he had a guest on his stream and this guest showed an inappropriate image to the stream. I don't have time to go dig around on all this because oh my god there are so many other things I'd rather do with my time. But like those photos of his teeth for instance, these were out in 2011. Um, like, here's a link to, like, or I'm sorry, 2020. Whoa, 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 hold on. After this, Destiny received a ban, and we don't have any updates since. But we do have a comparison coming from the same day from that of Ricegum, the YouTuber with 10 million subs who moved over to Twitch and had a slip up. On stream, he was sharing his phone screen and accidentally switched applications to his web browser where he had OnlyFans open. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta wipe this, this shit. Nah, hey yo, hey yo, I gotta go. After that happened, Ricegum ended his stream and deleted the VOD. He didn't receive any punishment for that slip up, and it's an interesting comparison as Destiny's slip up had nothing to do with his own mistake, while Ricegum's did. So, following on, we also had DJ Wheat making a joke about Destiny's ban. When he was asked why Destiny got banned, he responded, probably lost a debate. And so, as of right now, we don't know the length of the ban, but we do have a further clip from DJ Wheat. He does not mention Destiny's name in the clip, but does state that this has been a long time coming. Here is that. The individual that you're talking about has walked the line for nine, ten years. I, I, You all want to make it about one thing, but like, you say context matters, but you don't take the last nine years into consideration. Cool. Next up, we get the Twitch Town Hall meeting. Mentioned just now was DJ Wheat. For who who, for those who don't know, is the head of community productions at Twitch. So he is the Twitch staff himself and conducted this town hall meeting. In the meeting, the viewers were able to ask questions. So of course, given the recent Just Chatting meta, most viewers were asking about the Hot Tub meta. So the first thing DJ Wheat did was show a new workaround for those who aren't interested in these types of streams, which in the following clip, he shows the new Not Interested button, which has the job of helping with Twitch's recommendation system. Related streams anymore or if i come down and let's just say i this is not something that uh, interests me so um i can go in and i can click not interested and that will kind of help the twitch discovery system uh you know set what you see and what you don't so this follows on and many didn't have a positive view of this system because what it sounds like is happening is twitch is telling us if you don't want to see certain types of streams it's your responsibility to remove it from your recommendations which is where we have a clip from maya mocking this system um, i can go in and i can click not, not interested, interested and that will kind of help the twitch discovery system uh, you know, set what you see and what you don't <laughs> related to. Chat, it is your responsibility to set the discovery system to make sure that kids and other folks that come on the Twitch website, including advertisers, don't see naked women. That is your fault <laughs> that it's on there, not Twitch's. Understand? I didn't like his tone, I'm gonna be honest. So the focus of this town hall meeting talk stream was to show features and answer questions from chat. And here DJ we went on to talk about the hot tub meta directly, not saying a whole lot, mainly stating that under the TOS, everything is as it should be. About the hot tub meta. And we're going to talk about it. So we understand at Twitch that this has been getting a lot of attention from the community lately. And we have been watching closely. Our nudity and attire policy does allow bathing suits in an appropriate context. And hot tubs do fall under that criteria. However, what has not changed is the sexually suggestive and explicit content is not allowed under the guidelines, under the TOS, and Twitch will take action when that is reported to us. So 
So once again, people weren't happy with this response and we head over to Twitter where some responses were made. One person said, Severely disappointed at DJ Wheats and Twitch's response to the hot tub meta. What even is that wording? It's incredibly clear you have not watched more than two minutes of any of these streams. Or you don't know your own TOS. Reporting systems have done nothing. Which DJ Wheat responded, You are correct. I have not watched more than two minutes of those streams because that's not what I watch on Twitch. That's where we come on to Friday and we have one more opinion on this meta that stood out from that of Yabby, where she said, at DJ Wheat, what happens if a young girl under the age of 18 decides to do a hot tub stream like the ones we're seeing and just chatting at the moment? Am I still to believe this is not sexual content? If so, there is nothing stopping a 13 year old child from exposing her body on your site. Now DJ Wheat didn't respond to this one, but it brought forward a very good argument. If this truly is a normalized thing that isn't sexual at all, anyone could do it. But that's the last opinion on this one and that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you enjoyed today's video please leave a like, it really does help. I want to thank you all for watching as normal and I hope to see you in the next one.